All right, all right, all right. Let's go, let's go. Let's turn it up for Goofy Recap dropping in, saying you're late. I love it. I absolutely love it. You're right. I probably am late. <laughs> um, I imagine you were probably hoping that I was live yesterday, guys. Um, hmm. Try to keep it short. Uh, I had to help my wife. <laughs> okay. Enough said. I had to help my wife. Okay. And uh, you don't help the wife while well, you know the saying goes. Uh, well, if you do have, ha yeah, Kelly Clarkson, I'm already can't even talk. If you don't help your wife, then that equals not happy life. You know the saying, happy, happy wife, happy life. Let's go. Let's go. So that's what I was doing yesterday, guys. But I've been preparing. Don't think I've been slacking over here. Because I haven't. I have not. Since uh, Friday's stream, last stream, I've been grinding over the, in my head that one problem uh, where I was having... Uh, well, we're going to go over it today. What did it say? Something to blah, blah, blah to a constant yada 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 yeah i've been grinding that so i got a lot of good information for you guys stay tuned i have been preparing i've been doing work i haven't been slacking just been real busy and to be honest i enjoy doing the work and preparing and stuff and and also expanding my the knowledge in my own mind and uh, in turn, helping you guys as well. So that's why we're here, right? To see the pain, to see the mistakes, to understand why. You know what I mean? Right? I mean, hey, I could be a channel, show you the right way all the time. How are you going to learn? You going to remember how to type it the right way all the time? Probably not, right? Um, probably end up having to reflect on notes and whatever else, right? Mistakes, again, guys, that's how you learn, right? And the more mistakes you make, you know, like, you'll be fat, eventually get faster at deciphering, um, you know, when the compiler argues, argues with you, uh, if, if you know what I mean, right? You get those error messages, right? And they're kind of hard to decipher and understand, right? But um, that's where the terminology comes in too, right? You understand the terminology, and I'm getting better myself. You know, um, I watch my videos later on, and I'm like, oh my god, and this is what I do, literally, right? I almost wish I, you know, responded at the moment, but uh, I end up watching my video, looking for mistakes, and seeing what I could do better. And, uh, and then I see something I could have said, and then I go, oh, my God, really? <laughs> That's what I do. Oh, my God, really? <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Homer. Thank you for being part of the stream. Appreciate it. Goofy recap. Lurking and twerking in the background. Appreciate you being here as well. Thank you so much, my friends. I love it. I love it. Truly do. I'm um, going to get this train going, honestly. I want to get going on uh, what I want to share with you guys. So, yeah, stay tuned. Let's go. It's going to be good. Got some more new information for you guys. Uh, together, we shall grow. Let's go. I do want to say I appreciate you viewers. Uh, those that click the like button on the channel or whichever video, like you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. It's huge. It means a lot. Subscribers, you guys too, when you hit that subscribe button, I love that as well so much, seeing the channel grow. Um, let's keep it going, guys. Let's just keep it going. Remember, sharing is caring. All right. Let's get this train going.
All right, there we go. There we go. Whew. Actually, I couldn't wait to get streaming. Uh, last stream, last Friday, you know, came across this one problem, you know. And it has to do with the uh, program itself, the way it's de designed. You could use other line coding software. Um, uh, some compilers, they allow the kind of the errors and stuff, if you will. We're going to get into it so you understand what I'm kind of getting at. I was doing it in an array and trying to get it to um, just give me garbage return. I wanted, you know to show you guys what garbage looks like in the sense. And I was having some difficulties, I won't lie. And uh, I wanted to go over it, I wanted to kind of explain it, but in my mind I'm like, I'm not prepared to explain it. So I kind of just let it slide and then I continued on with my instruction, right? So I wanted to get better prepared and give you guys a better understanding. In other words, give you the proper correct information. So I've been grinding uh, some some good stuff. Check it out, my ten mile, my ten mile comment line coding program. Uh, it's grown, it's grown. I know uh, those master coders, they just love the comments. Literally, they see they they stop by the channel and they like they see all that green, right? You can see it over here on the right. And they literally, they literally pass out, okay? Literally. Like, it's just too overwhelming, you know? I'm I'm sorry, you know? It's, it's a little bit much for them, I guess. I hope they're okay, though, you know? They didn't, you know, pass out or hurt themselves too hard when they fell down. Um, really, they just fell in cringe, right? It wasn't fear. It wasn't shock. It was, you know, they passed out in cringe. <laughs> That's okay. I will say it again. I will say it again. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. This is for my viewers. And we're all learning and growing together here. And I keep the information for educational and learning purposes only. Let's go. No intentions of releasing this. This is this is for, for my awesome viewers. Okay. And I like to recap and go to the different areas. I'm, I'm literally, I'm not going to jump between word or, or whatever. Um, jumping back and forth and yeah, just not, it's here. I'm going to keep it here. It's, this works great. Carrying on, carrying on. Check this out guys. What I did. Okay. I have been busy. Oh, look, look what I did. Look what I created. I created an actual table of comment comments. Table of comments? Well, literally, that's what it is. A table of comments, I guess, if you look at it that way. Skip commercial. <laughs> table of comments, yes. I created a table of comments. I did it. I've been busy, and now I'm not going to be kind of, I'm going to, you'll see the table of comment comments. Why can't I say contents? Is that a word I, I like? don't like or something? I don't know. I have no idea. So you guys will see the table of contents. Contents. There you go. I actually said it. Shocker. So I'll reflect on this because I actually have to update my lines every time I add new information, which is fine. I have it at the bottom. So, you know, it works. It works. And um, so, yeah, now I could come here and I could reflect on this and go to the different topics. You can see what area, like literally, this is everything in it, okay? Everything in it for you guys here. So we're going to start. Let's get started. Need some coffee? Great to be back. Great to have you guys here. Viewers. And lurkers and twerkers, thank you so much. Coffee time. Oh, that coffee is so good. I gotta take it slow on it though, because then I'll have none. And I can't I don't like being empty of coffee, okay? Need more already. My cup is 
I don't know, one quarter full. <laughs> That's not enough. All right, let's get into this. Redo. I wanted to redo on this. I was typing some code. Let's, uh, last stream, we're working on classes. I'm going to get more. I'm going to be doing more, guys. I'm going to be doing more. Okay, so stay tuned for that. Um, lots of repetition, grinding out different classes and that. And hey, different problems, different ideas, different concepts. Um, the more you do, the more it gets ingrained in your man brain. Oh, yeah. Okay. Keeping that. Make sure I have everything deleted. Oh, yeah. My goodness. I don't think I had enough coffee last Friday. Whoa. I was tired. Like, it, I gotta be aware that I don't have leave any code behind, okay? <laughs> really gotta watch for that. So, again, my pain is your gain, guys. You're learning from me, you know, the things that you get that can happen. Let's say you're typing up a bunch of different code and then you want to start a new problem or whatever, and then you leave some of your old code behind. Yeah, and if you're not actually looking for it, yeah, it could cause you problems. Problemos. Check the program. Make sure we're good. Okay. Let's go. We are golden. Okay. Here we go. This is what I did. Am I using my type def? Forget type def. I'm kind of tired of it. It's been giving me grief too. I'm uh, just going to use short int. This involves negative values. Uh, those of you that are not up to par, I guess, on what's happening, well, you, you know, in all fairness, you're going to have to just start at the beginning of the series and uh, follow along. We're going step by step here, guys, step by step. Okay. Uh, commercial, get skipped. Step by step. So if you're learning and new to line coding, yeah, I recommend follow the series. I go through a lot of different problems and a lot of different concepts. I go over the terminology and uh, you even get to see some of my uh, 10 mile comment information. So I do share it with you videos 3, 4, 5, 9 and uh, 14. The rest of it I get into doing mathematics and uh, other line coding problems or, you know, solutions, however you want to look at it. All right, so last stream. This is the one that's been, oh, I just couldn't, I just couldn't stop thinking about it, okay? Remember how I did this? So normally this is what we do, right? We create a data type, okay? Declare data type, create a variable name, Simon operator, and then give it a value. Value gets stored into the variable, right? You guys know this, right? And then I decided, oh, hey, I'm going to throw in an array, okay? And while I'm throwing it uh, in an array, I'm going to, hey, I'm going to use the proper syntax for one. Uh, I'm going to put X in there. Oh, yeah, doesn't that sound like fun, right? And uh, I think it went like this, if I remember correctly and then this is where we kind of got the error okay so i'll run it we will get arguments okay there we go it says syntax error why syntax error this time you give me a new problem really really compiler you really like to mess with me don't you um uh, see oh right ha! i know what i'm doing wrong yeah, I might want to give the array a name. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, I think I used N, if I recall right, correctly. There we go. Okay, don't forget to give your array a name, okay? Um, they can't get Social Security without having a name, right? <laughs> Here we go. Expression did not evaluate to a constant. This is it, guys. 
This is it, okay? So I'm going to help you guys understand. I've got it. I've got the information. I've got the gold, and I'm going to explain it. And uh, you're going to love it, and uh, even I loved it. So let's get right to it. This is the error, right? Okay, right over here, you're getting the, you know, the explanation of errors, okay? Not the perfectness, okay? We are looking for... Oh, I'm excited. I want to get right into this. Okay, where is it? <clears throat> uh, seven something. Yeah, here we go. Okay, expression did not evaluate to a constant. Line 719. All right, let's get to this. Here we go. Expression did not evaluate to a constant. Okay, you guys want to know why? This is why. All right. So short int, uh, array name. And you have a variable put inside. Normally inside the, in the uh, square brackets, you put a value. And that value refers to how many elements you have in your e array. Okay? <clears throat> elements. Elements are just random values. Okay? But when you're talking about arrays, you actually call them elements. Okay, guys? Okay, this is why. So this is because uh, I'm using Visual Studio, right? Which, you know, um, probably a better program, superior. Okay, just going to throw it out there. So because, okay, that's enough of those silly commercials. Okay, let's get to this. Okay, it's because it is a variable length array. What is a variable length array? VLA, okay? So basically, it's not standard in C, okay, in the sense. Just trying to keep it kind of generalized here, right? So and is not a constant value, right? Um, I think before I, yeah, this is what I did. But anyways, let's just carry on. So it's not a constant value. In other words, its value is not known at compile time. Okay, these these are these are more on top of having to understand data types, having to understand uh, min and max values, having to understand um, what else is involved. Let me just look here. Brain moment. Okay. Uh, is that it? No, it's right here. Okay, memory, right? That's it. Haha, <laughs> memory, right? This is something else too, right? So I've showed you guys data types. I've shared with you guys min and max values of data types. Uh, I've shared with you the amount of memory that's allo allocated um, in memory for that value. We got into also the ASCII table. Lots to understand for sure. So follow the series. If you want to see that, you're going to have to. I am not going to recap. We are keeping this train going. Okay, so here's another concept that we have to understand. Compile time, right? Some compilers like GCC... Uh, allow time allow them as an extension okay some co compilers if i could actually speak um uh, they allow it right so that's why you i don't know maybe some streamers are using these other compilers so they don't have the errors that come out right so that they look good all the time <laughs> yeah so uh yeah don't mind looking bad over here right because uh this is what it's about what it is about seeing the errors, seeing the mistakes, and learning and growing, right, makes you a better debugger, okay, 100%. Okay, so its value, its value is not known at compile time, okay? Some compilers, okay, uh, blah, 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 I've already read that. VL, VLA definition, in computer programming, a variable length array, also called variable sized or runtime sized, okay? is an array data structure whose length is determined at runtime, okay, instead of compile time, okay? I'm going to get into runtime and compile time more here with you guys, okay? So this is going to be great. You're going to love this. 
all right so on and then there's also the 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 uh the concept of on the stack and on the heap we're gonna get into that as well guys lots of good stuff here today so on the stack in computer programming an automatic variable is a local variable which is allocated and deallocated automatically when the program flow enters and leaves the variable scope okay so remember code is run line by line right guys you kind of have to think computer a little bit right there's a it goes in deeper right um like when it gets to this line it actually reads all this stuff here information gets cleared and then it gets stored over here right so you have to kind of have that understanding but i'm going to show you an example all right so where am i here so and leaves the variable scope right so essentially getting to the next line it'll leave the variable scope all right the variables allocated are called stack variables okay so this is top of the memory in other words just look at it as kind of the top of the memory when variables are being stored into temporary ram okay or automatic variables right so it's automatic. They get allocated and deallocated automatically. All right. So on the heap, that's basically underneath the stack. Okay. That's the, the extra space storage location underneath the stack. Okay. When you want to allocate memory and don't know the value until runtime, you need to use dynamic memory allocation. Okay. Uh, this is done in C with the operator new, okay? Um, if I need it, it makes more sense to say the operator new, okay? I'm going to show you an example of that as well, guys. Okay, the memory you allocate yourself with new also needs to be freed with delete or delete. So in your mind, try to remember this when you're using new operator, right? Equals new operator or equals new, yada, yada, yada. At the end of your line code, you have to delete whether it's an array or and that sort of thing. Okay, so that's a must. Uh, if you don't, then you end up well. Basically, you can, you can have a memory leak. Okay, it gets worse for larger programs, and you know at at, at a larger level, uh, this is can be a pretty serious thing, right? You can actually have a system crash. Okay, so VLAs can also be dynamically allocated on the heap. Okay, so when you hear dynamic, when you hear dynamically allocated, just think on the heap. Okay, and internally accessed using a pointer to this block. Okay, and uh, for example, the pointer. There you go. All right, um, I get into referencing and dereference. Re referencing and dereferencing. Uh, video 16, some good views on that. Good views, yeah, video 16. Memory address, pointers, referencing and dereferencing. All right, you're going to have to go back, check it out. Um, I'm past that part of explaining. All right, guys. Thank you for understanding. You're awesome. Okay, where am I going? Okay. Okay, I got to follow my little stream details here. Okay, next we're going to, now that I mentioned that, uh, music. Do I have music? Oh. Okay, we're good. <clears throat> okay, good. God, I'm my own I'm my own mod here guys I gotta pay attention to kind of it's a little distracting to be honest trying to have to like I just want to focus on teaching it and and sharing the good information of line coding with you guys not have to pay attention to uh, you know OBS studio all the time and commercials thank God my bot is working though hey guys my bot is working good thanks bot. Appreciate your help. You're saving me a lot of time. Good old bot. I had to turn off this because... Oh, okay. Now it's on. All right. Good. See, that comes up. That's supposed to pop up when, uh, you know, action kind of happens in the, in the live stream. 
I don't know. I'll figure that out later. Just more things, right? More things. More settings. Dealing with uh, fixing the bugs and stuff with mic audio. Fixing the bugs and such with OBS Studio. And then I got to go onto the internet and onto stream elements. And there's things to do there. Lots going on, guys. Lots going on. Even on top of all that, learning, uh, evolving my minds, you know, that goal, that direction of becoming a master coder one day. My dream is to one day. <laughs> one day. That's the goal. Step by step till we get there. Okay. Keep the train going. Lots to go over here. Okay. Definition of compiler. Okay. Definition of compiler. 340 okay uh, what? oh okay I got things messed up a little bit but that's okay maybe I didn't I don't know we're here though definition of a compiler in C okay so more stuff to understand and be aware of right of course you guys know what a compiler is right here we go things that are happening when I click this button you got compile time right which is kind of the action happening. And then you got the runtime, right? So there's a bit of a, of course, we still have this error, right? So sorry, I can't share the console with you today until we fix this problem. We're going to get there though. <clears throat> okay, the purpose of a compiler is to ensure that the programmer's intentions are correctly translated into a form that the compiler can understand, okay? You guys are heard. You guys have heard of binary and zeros and ones, right? That's why C CPP has a faster runtime because its layer is much closer to the processor, right? Zeros and ones. They literally are next door neighbors talking in zeros and ones. That's how close they are. Hence, why you get a faster runtime. Okay. Um, I have that as well. Hopefully, I share it with you guys uh, soon. Okay, so it's a compiled language because it uses a compiler to translate your source code into machine code, right? Compilers are utility programs, okay, which basic, basically takes your code and transforms. I'm not the best at reader, guys, but I try. And transforms it into executable machine code files. When you run a compiler on your code, first... The preprocessor reads the source source code. So basically the code you wrote, right? This is your compile time, okay? Source code is typically written in a high-level language or human readable language, you know, and of course you got these different languages, right? Okay, so compiler translates code from a high high-level programming language. Uh, I have some repetition, but that's how you kind of get it ingrained in your membrane. There you go. Uh, into machine code, low-level object code, binary language before the program runs. Okay, so then you got runtime next. Okay, and then there's the interpret interpreter. Okay, not uh, I want to say Terminator. Get to the chopper. I love it. So interpreter translates code written in a high level programming language into machine code line by line as the code runs, right? You've heard this. Okay. Let's get to what is compile time and runtime. Okay. Here we go. Compile time. The instructions or source code written using high level language is required to get converted to machine code for a computer to understand okay during compile time the source code is translated to a byte code right lots of repetition but you, you get the idea right during this time the compiler also checks for syntax semantic and type of code okay so compile time eva evaluation means that the value of some variable was determined 
when everything is compiled into object files. So there's a lot, a lot of stuff happening in the background that we're not aware of, right? And here we go. This is it. Now you guys know, right? Runtime. A program's life cycle is a runtime when the program is in execution, okay? Uh, it's the final phase of the program life cycle in which the machine executes the program code, okay? Um, the other phases include edit time, when the source code of the program is being edited, okay? Stuff we didn't know, right? We just type in code and we run it and we, you know, we're like happy that all the magic happens automatically for us, right? This is stuff that's actually happening, okay? This phase includes bug fixing, refactoring, and adding new features, okay? Runtime evaluation would mean that the value of some variable has to be determined at runtime. That's exactly why I was getting this error down here, right? Because the value wasn't known at compile time, right? Or um, it basically, uh, yeah, I'm just going to carry on a read. Runtime evaluation would mean that the value of some the variable has to be determined at runtime, right? So it needs that value at runtime. That's why we're getting this. Remember, VLA, right? Okay, following are the different types of runtime errors, okay? Division by zero when a number is divided by zero. That's why we get NAN, right? You see, you've seen that error. Um, Undefined, I just look at it as undefined, right? When you're doing mathematics, it, it's the same thing, undefined, okay? When you have a fraction or, or a whole number or an integer being divided by zero, it's the same thing, guys. Dereferencing a null pointer. When a program attempt, attempts to access memory with a null, okay? Uh, and I do have information on null for you guys as well. Uh, running out of memory when a computer has no memory to allocate to programs, okay? And then errors. During compile time, errors occur because of syntax and semantic, okay? Here's the explanation. Syntax errors occur because of the wrong syntax of the written code. So that's user, right? User typing in, you know, or maybe they forgot syntax or whatever. Semantic errors occur in reference to variable, function, type declarations, and type checking. So imagine this is semantics, right? Okay, so I got an example to share with you. Let's bring it up. Uh, is it here? Yeah, it's right here, okay? So just a little, you know, uh, diagram here to share that I got off the old interweb. Okay, so the following figure explains the stages involved, stages involved during the software program coding. This is to provide context and how the stages are related, right? Compile time is first, right? And then runtime second, okay? Machine code comp compile time is the period when the programming code uh, is converted to machine code, okay? So that's what's happening here, okay? And then runtime, this area, is the period of time when a program is running and generally occurs after compile time, okay, guys? Oh, hang on a sec. Okay, so next slide. All right. Differences. The following table shows a comparison between compile time and runtime. Okay. Uh, time period. I wonder, like, uh, I guess I'll just read it. Time period for translation of source code like Java to intermediate code like class. Okay. Runtime time period between start and end of uh, running intermediate code at runtime environment. And then this is to check syntax and semantics. This is to run the code, okay? Errors get detected by compiler without execution of the program, okay? Only can detect after execution of the program. Fixing an error 
this stage is possible during compile time, okay? Fixing an error requires going back to code, right? And that's essentially what's happened with this here, right? Went back to code. All right, so that is compile and runtime. Uh, definition of heap and stack. Okay, here we go. I have other information, but we really don't need to know this. This is just some extra information. Let's uh, let's get into this. Uh, yeah, right here. Whoa, sorry. Oh, I keep doing that. My bad, guys. Okay, definition of heap and stack, all right? This is something we really need to understand, right? This right here, okay? This is key, guys. On top of having to learn all the other fundamentals and understanding of line coding uh, and then data types and memory allocation and, and min and max values and how they work like a clock and all that. And then, of course, you got you got a separate and differentiate between the correlation of ascii table and your keyboard and characters and decks and and all those good things right but here's a deeper understanding into memory okay when your ver value gets stored into memory okay definition of heap and stack okay stacks right are the top okay the stack is the top the heap is underneath okay Stacks are a type of container adapters with LIFO, last in, first out, right? So there's like blocks of memory, right? So the bottom block gets kind of deallocated, right? So that new allocation can happen at the top, okay? That makes sense? I hope so. Uh, type of working where a new element is added at one end, top, and an element is removed from that end only, right? Just like I kind of said. Stack uses an encapsulated object of either vector or DQ by default or list, right? Arrays like a list, isn't it? I hope I'm correct on that, essentially. Sequential container class, right? As its underlying container, providing a specific set of member functions to access its elements. We're creating a stack. We must, okay, this is kind of really not, we're not really getting into this kind of stuff very much. I should have a better, I wish I had a better description, but this is kind of key right here. Okay, last in, first out. Okay, so you understand how the stack works. Okay, and that's why uh values are like that's why you get errors because that value or that memory location could be gone right so i hope that makes sense right because if it's at the bottom of the stack it's gone right deallocated uh for creating a stack we okay no 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 don't read that programming stacks are based on the principle of last in and first out okay so this is key, key understanding of stacks. A commonly used type of data abstract that consists of two major operations and then there's push and pop, right? And then hopefully in the future, I'll get into doing some of that kind of line coding for you guys. Okay, baby steps, one step at a time. Uh, what is meant by heap and C? Well, in certain programming languages, including C, CPP, Pascal, a heap is an area of pre reserved computer main storage memory that a program process can use to store data in some variable amount that won't be known until the program is running. Okay, so that's run time. Okay, that's why the heap is used, right? So that that information is available. The heap is awesome. It helps. It's huge. So the heap data structure can be implemented in a range using SDL, which provides faster man, max or min item retrieval and faster insertion and deletion on stored data and also works as a subroutine for heap sort, okay? And of course, these are things, this is just for knowledge so that you guys, you know, are aware of it, right? Hopefully, eventually we'll get into it. But here's a great example I have to share. Okay, 
I found this on the old interweb and it's pretty decent. I like it. I uh, just want to clear up some of this. Uh, my history. Uh, is that still playing? What's going on? What's up? You still playing? Okay, good. Mm, I hope it's not too loud. You guys can hear me okay. I turned my headset on really low so I could talk, but I like to listen to the music as well. The vibes, yeah. Okay, focus. All right, where is that? Uh, where did I put that? Here it is. Here we go. Is this it? Yeah, this is it. Okay, I'm going to actually share this with you guys. Okay, we'll just maximize it. Okay. <clears throat> Whole screen, Steep and Hacked, okay, by Jenny Chen and Ruyaha, Ruyaha Guao. Oh, I'm sorry I wrecked your name. I really apologize, friend. Anyways, overview. Overview. When a program is running, it takes up memory. Sometimes we are not aware of the memory being allocated. In fact, every time you create a new variable, your program is allocating more memory for you to store that variable. Okay, this article folks focuses on stack and heap, okay? Each running program has its own memory layout, separate separated from other programs. The layout consists of a lot of segments including stack, stored local variables, right? Like int x equals 5. That's basically uh, on the stack, okay? Heap, dynamic memory for programmer to allocate, right? See the stack is, the heap is underneath the stack. A data stores global variables, separate, separate it into initialized and, and uninitialized. Text, stores the code being executed, okay? In order to pinpoint e each memory location in a program's memory, we assign each byte of memory and address, right? Dereferencing and dereferencing. Remember, guys, you can actually you can actually return the memory location, okay, or address. The addresses go from zero all the way to the largest possible address, depending on the machine. Okay, I uh, believe what they mean is 32-bit or 64-bit architecture. Uh, maybe how much RAM you have, right? I got two 16 gig sticks so i got 32 um right staying on i gotta check something da, 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 da. bear with me okay i'll just pop it in the chat this is what i have okay i'm gonna pop in chat my ram there we go it's there for you guys corsair baby Okay, I need to close this. I don't want that going off. There we go. Okay, I got two, two times 16, okay? 32 gigabytes. And they're overclocked to 3600 megahertz frequency, okay? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, here we go. So that's kind of a general little bit of layout, right? Kind of the order how it works, okay? Low address, high address. Memory layout of a CPP program. Okay, let's carry on. Uh, by convention, we express the addresses in base 16 numbers. Remember, I showed you guys the number system, right? Hexadecimal just opens up more larger avenues of just it expand, expands over. And I'm thinking about IP addresses and such now. But yeah, I want to carry on. For instance, the smallest possible area address is, okay, there we go, for example, where 0x means base 16, and the largest possible address could be 0x, all apps, okay? Uh, I guess I could go over that real quick uh, right here. Get back to this. Uh, numbers, where is that again? It's at the bottom here. <clears throat> 
Number systems, 11.25, okay? Uh, yeah. What? Did I really mess things up? Oh, 11. Come on, learn how to read. <laughs> Learning how to read numbers for the first time, guys, apparently. Number systems, right? Decimal base 10, 0 to 9, okay? Binary base 2, okay? And then hexadecimal, right? 0 to 9 and A to F, right? 0 is the low and F is the large, okay? Right, guys? Remember that? Okay, let's, let's get back to this. Um, bring this back up. Okay. So here we got an example, okay? The stack segment is near the top of the memory with high address, okay? Every time a function is called, the machine allocates some stack memory for it, okay? When a new local variable is declared, more stack memory is allocated for that function to store the variable. Such allocations make the stack grow downwards, okay? Stack grows downwards, okay? Last in, first out, right? Remember that? Uh, after the function returns, the stack of memory of this function is deallocated, which means um, all local variables become invalid, okay? <clears throat> I know I say okay a lot, but you guys love it. The allocation and deallocation for stack memory is automatically done, right? We said that already. So the variable al variables allocated on the stack are called stack variables or automatic variables, okay? So keep that in mind when you hear that kind of terminology or even people, other coders speaking the, speak the language, right? Okay, here we go. Here's an example. So which I'm going to go to one first. Let's stop here. Okay, so the following figure shows an example of what stack memory looks like when the corresponding code is run, okay? So if, remember, all the magic happens in the int main, right? This is, a, this is an int function outside the main, right? That's what they're showing here. This is inside the main, okay? Line by line until it reaches a function, right? And then it jumps to goes from here and up to here, but let's carry on. Okay, allocate variable A for main, right? So it's unknown, right? This is uh, a VLA, right? This is a VLA, basically. Okay, and then it goes to the second line, okay? Int B equals three, right? It's declared or declared initialized, right? B is initialized, okay? Remember, A is not. It doesn't even have the value zero. Right now, int A has garbage. Okay, guys? <clears throat> int A has garbage stored in it. Okay, VLA. Int B has the value of negative three stored into it, into the variable. Okay? So let's carry on. Uh, int C, same thing, right? That's why... There's a value, you can see there's a value stored on the stack. You can see it, right? Okay, here we go, next one. Allocate P for main and store address of B. Okay, right, so pointer and referencing. Referencing, dereferencing, right? That's what this is, guys. Okay, so remember, P is holding the memory address of B. That's basically what this means. Memory address of B is being stored into P. Okay, P is a pointer. Okay. Uh, and then we get down to the next line, right? Notice it's at the function part. Okay, this is now the function. Okay, so line by line until it reaches a function goes to this. Okay. So now it knows int A, okay? The function hello is running. It knows the value of A now, okay? The value of A is being stored in the function, okay? 
stores 100. Okay, so does it store in the, into D? Is that the next thing? What happens next? Oh, okay, let's click back. Allocate variable A for hello and store 100. Okay, all right. So is it storing 100 into A? I uh, would assume so. Uh, deallocate the stack memory of hello and return 100 to the main. Okay, well, it looks like uh, A is still holding 100. Okay, so we're back in the main, right? Because it goes line by line, jumps to the function, all right, does its thing, and then gets back to the main, all right? So, I mean, you got to kind of understand how the code's working a bit or how the program's working. Think computer, I guess. You kind of have to think like a computer a little bit. Oh, now D has the value of 100, okay? Allocate D for main and store 100. Okay, because here it says int D equals, well, int A is 100, right? That gets stored into D now, okay? Up here, A is still unknown at the top of the stack, right? You see that? Int A is still unknown. But D has 100. Okay, so D allocate the stack me memory of, of main and return zero. Okay, so it's deallocating the stack memory, right, at this point. Let's carry on. I'll show you another example. Since the stack memory of a function gets deallocated after the function returns, there is no guarantee that the value stored in those area, I want to, well, I guess it doesn't matter. I can fix it later. <clears throat> There's no guarantee that the value stored in those areas will stay the same. A common mistake is to return a pointer to a stack variable in a helper function, okay? After the caller gets his pointer, the invalid stack memory can be overwritten at any time, okay? The following figure, dem figure demonstrates one example of such scenario. Assume there is a cube class that has methods, right? Methods are inside of a function, right? Get volume, right? Uh, and get surface, okay? We're assuming this. It's not really showing all the code. Okay, let's go back to one. I'll try to explain it, but I'm not really going to, yeah. We'll just read. <clears throat> Allocate cube C for the cube, okay? So here it goes to the function, right? Here's the function, okay? And then it goes up here. Gets to int main, boom, goes to the function. Allocate cube C for create cube, okay? All right, so it takes cube C, allocates that value of 20 stored on the stack. Deallocate stack memory of create cube and return address to C. That's what this line is saying right here. Okay, return address to C. Allocate pointer C for main and store the return value. Notice that the stack memory of create cube is overwritten. Oh, right, because it went from a value to a memory address. Right? It got overwritten. Okay? So now it's all confused. Right? And it went, no, Bob, what are you doing to me, Bob? And that actually gets stored into this pointer. A pointer actually holds a memory address, but... Yeah, that's what it's holding. It's holding the memory address now, right? Not a value anymore. Right? Because a pointer holds a memory address. Okay. Uh, allocate stack memory, forget volume, and calculate volume using the vol with the C, right? Because there's no value, it's a memory address. How could it do any calculations, right? Okay. Guys, you following? It's crazy, but yeah, this is the stuff that happens. That's why you have to understand your line code, line by line. Anybody could type code, anybody could share with you the, the perfectness of line coding. 
and not explain the bugs or or the or the do's and don'ts and of each line right i think anybody could do that but you need to see the pain guys that's how you learn that's how you grow okay so here we go get volume function which isn't being showed here right but let's say you know it uses the value c um but it's a, a memory address it can't do any calculations right uh allocate stack memory for get volume and calculate volume using the width of c well the width of c is now a, a memory address not a value since the width of c is corrupted right the volume is also incorrect right same thing with get surface so that actually gets stored into double r well double r is now confused right it's got garbage essentially <clears throat> uh deallocate de memory of get volume okay uh allocate r for main to store right so you know it goes from here to here right usually that's how it works int x equals five five gets stored into x it goes from right to left okay that's how the code is working right to left takes the information stores it into here okay guys uh allocate r for main to store the yeah, get volume okay so r maybe r now is being used in get surface i don't know maybe it is i have no idea okay uh it's showing here c width squared that's kind of the formula for get surface area i guess but again c and these are pointers i'm going to get into pointers i should show you guys that as well uh they work with functions okay pointers work with functions okay guys <clears throat> so uh pointer asterisk equals normally like uh, a memory address it's kind of common how you see it right but if you want to point to a function you use this okay uh we'll get into that okay so uh, calculate service area using the width of c it doesn't know c anymore right uh similar to get volume the surface area calculated will be incorrect okay uh, deallocate memory okay of get surface right allocate v for main right so it deallocates and then goes to here okay whatever is stored here whatever's here gets stored into here deallocated stored okay so v is got garbage essentially and then deallocate the stack memory of main and return zero. Okay. So everything is just pretty much corrupted. Uh, okay. I'll let you guys kind of read that on your own. Need some coffee. Uh, in the previous heap, in the previous section, we saw that functions cannot return pointers of stack variables. To solve this issue, you can either return by copy or put the value at somewhere more permanent than stack memory. Heap memory is such a place, okay? Unlike stack memory, heap memory is allocated explicitly by programmers and it won't be deallocated until it is explicitly freed so the programmer now has control right because remember on the stack it's automatically deallocated um the programmer has to free the memory by using the delete command we'll get into that to allocate heat memory and c use keyword new okay this is what we're getting into uh followed by the constructor of what what you want to allocate the return value of new operator will be the address of what you just created which points to somewhere in the heap okay here we go all right let's click back here so here we go 
Uh, this example demonstrates what happens in both stack and heap when the corresponding code is executed. Okay, so we're in the main. Uh, new int, right? Here's how you do it. Int uh, aster pointer p equals new int. Okay. Allocate an integer with default value zero on the heap. Okay, so it actually has a value stored. Allocate P on main stack to store the address of the integer. Okay. This, uh, let's just have a look. That's the stack. This is the heap, right? Okay. Here's the stack. Here's the heap. Okay, cool. Pointer P has the memory address into zero. Okay, allocate a cube with default width 20 on the heap. Allocate C1 on main stack to store the address of the cube. Okay, so we don't see the actual function. Okay, right? They're not sharing that, but we just have to believe. Okay, new cube width 20 must be in there gets stored in the, the pointer C1. C1 what has the memory address, right? Right? Okay, allocate C2 on the main stack and store a copy of it. Oh, we're making a copy. This is how you make a copy, right? Whatever's stored in pointer C1, while C2 is taking that as well. Right, and this is how... Uh, Leave thinking that what's in C1. C1 holds either because uh, I know you to return a value, you use the asterisk. If I believe, I have to go over that again. Um, D ref referencing and D referencing. You got to kind of get that straight in your mind, guys. Uh, let's see. Okay. Copy of C1. So it's just a copy, right? So C2 is a copy of C1. All right. That's how you create a copy. Uh, call method set length. Okay. It actually has a value stored in the test in its parameters. Parameters? No. Parentheses. Again, parentheses. Uh, changes the width of the cube pointed by both C1 and C2. Okay, points, C2 points to the function. Okay. Uh, deallocate stack memory of main and return zero. There's a lot of different things going on. It's not the full best, you know, um, visual um, demonstration, I guess, because you don't, you don't see the cube function, you don't see the set length function, but that gives you a general idea, right? These are all pointing to the heap, okay, basically. Okay, uh, you may notice in the above example that even at the end of the program, the heap memory is still not freed, right? So this is called a memory leak, right? Because they, they need to use delete. You gotta delete your function. Uh, memory leaks in small group programs might not look like a big deal, but for long-running servers, memory leaks can slow down the whole machine and eventually cause the program to crash, okay? Do I need to go more into this, guys? Uh, I don't know if I could share the link. link. To free heap memory, use the keyword delete, okay? Followed by the pointer to the heap. Be careful about the memory you freed. If you try to use a pointer to those memory after you free them, it will cause undefined behavior. <clears throat> to avoid such uh, issues, I don't normally talk a lot, guys. <laughs> Usually when I'm working, I'm pretty quiet. Uh, to avoid such issues, it is good practice to set the value of freed pointers to null no, to no pointer immediately after delete. Okay. To avoid such issues, it is good practice to set the value of freed pointers, okay, pointers to null, okay. There we go. 
Okay, let's uh let's look for number one here. Okay, it's showing the function here this time, right? Function itself has a pointer to equals new. It has a pointer, right? With a value inside. And equals, right? We're using the new operator. Okay, here. Uh, allocate a cube with 20 on the heap. Allocate a cube pointer C on create cube on heap stack to store the address of the cube. Okay, there we go. Stores the address of this on the heap. Okay. Deallocate stack memory for and return the value of pointer C. Okay. That's right here. Okay. This is still happening right here. We're, we're inside this function still, okay? Uh, allocate cube on main stack and store the return pointer. Okay, so it's done with what it, it's done with this, goes from return C, gets back to here, stores in the pointer, okay? And store the return pointer, yeah. Okay, everything's kind of, Consistent, but you can see it's at least got the information. Uh, call method get volume, okay, uh, which calculates the volume to be 8,000, right? So the calculations are working because um, everything's being, um, well, the proper syntax, proper line coding format, right? Essentially. Now we have values and not garbage. So the actual get volume calculation has been completed. Okay, and then that gets stored in the double V, I imagine, on the stack. Allocate double V to store the return value of 8,000. Yeah, double V's on the stack, you see that, right? Okay, uh, and then delete cube. Okay, there you go. Delete cube. Delete the pointer. Got to delete the pointer. Looks like, yeah. Deallocate cube. Pointed by cube. Okay, and... Uh, notice that cube is still pointing to invalid memory on the heap. Okay. Okay, that's what it says. Uh, delete cube. Deallocate the cube pointed by cube is what it's saying. Basically, you got to delete it. You got to free up that memory, okay? Or you have garbage, garbage leak of memory, right? Okay, and then cube equals point, no pointer. There you go. Just like they said earlier here, right? To avoid such issues, it's good practice to set the value of freed pointers to no pointer immediately after delete. Okay. Delete cube, then cube equals no pointer. Boom. Which is zero. Okay, null equals zero essentially. And then uh, return zero. Deallocate the stack memory of main. That kind of happens automatically on the stack, right? Here the programmer actually has to do the cleanup. Okay, the programmer has to do the cleanup on the heap. Okay, guys? That's it. Okay? That is it. That was, good, that was a pretty good example, wasn't it? So, I don't know, um, I don't know if you guys need the link or not. Let me know in comments. Maybe I'll put the link in the comments instead of on the, in the chat. Probably the best. All right. Uh, did I get into definition of new operator? No, I did not. Wow, I have a lot I'm sharing with you guys here. Okay, definition of new operator. Uh, 745. 
There it is. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Definition of new operator in C, all right? Let's get into this, guys. So the C new operator is used to allocate memory from the heap at runtime, okay? If there is enough memory, the new operator initializes the memory and returns the address of the new allocation and initializes the block of memory to the variable pointer type. Okay, so this is kind of reiterating again, uh, but like I said, you know, repetition helps it ingrain in your membrane. Okay, what is the new operator? The new operator is used to allocate memory dynamically. Okay, when you hear that dynamically, think of new operator. Dynamically allocating memory on the heap. Heap dynamically, new operator, delete. What's the, all those things belong together? All those concepts or terms, terminologies. Yada, yada, yada. Let's go. Okay, for a variable or a lot. This means that the memory is allocated during the execution of the program as opposed to being allocated at compile time, right? Because that's normally how we've been doing the programming so far, right, guys? We've been kind of doing VLAs a lot, right? Which is, well, it's, it's all part of the learning too, right? Right now we're growing. Let's go. Use of the new operator signifies a request for the memory allocation, so on the heap, okay? When you use new, you're allocating memory on the heap, all right? Uh, if the sufficient memory is available, it initializes the memory and returns its address to the pointer variable, right? So on, on the stack, it'll be a pointer variable, right? And it's holding a memory address, right? Asterisk P equals memory address, right? The new operator should only be used if the data object should remain in memory until delete is called. Otherwise, if the new operator is not used, the object is automatically destroyed when it goes out of scope, meaning off the stack, okay? In other words, the objects use, using new are cleaned up manually, right, by the programmer on the heap, okay, using the delete. While other objects are automatically cleaned when they go out of scope. So that's on the stack, right, guys? Okay, uh, example 4142. Okay, we got into this about VLAs and that, right? Now... We're going to type this code up here. I'm going to copy this. I kept this example. Okay, but I wanted to, sh I do have another example to show you, but I wanted, let's do this. Let's run this code. Now we're getting into it. Okay, what do I have here? Let's see. What did I, so I used you use short. So I'm going to have, to, I'm going to be deleting all this because I'm, I'm done with type def right now. Okay, so I'm going to comment this out. Okay, that's just going to confuse things. Okay, so my uh, array has a variable in it, right? There's no initialization, right? Uh, short int. Okay, and then asterisk, right? And then... I am a R R okay equals new dynamically right now we're storing on the heap right uh, short int again still have to declare n okay hopefully. I might need to even comment this out if I remember right. I can't remember which line I needed. I forget. And then let's see out, right? So notice that we don't have anything initialized, right? There's no elements in our array. We have nothing, right? So here in this line, I'm actually trying to get 
So remember, index position, okay? I get into arrays back in video part 10, all right? I explain elements and I explain index position. Okay, so now I'm just, I want to return whatever value is stored in uh, index position zero. Well, take notes, I don't have any values. I haven't put any elements at all in my array, okay? So I, I should delete, right? I actually could steal this, just use it, okay? And then I'm gonna delete this. This was the original code when we were getting errors. Okay, I'm gonna delete this, okay? And let's run it. Remember, I was trying to get return garbage, okay, with this line. All right, are we gonna see garbage? Let's go. So n is. So I gotta remember which one that I used before. Ta -da! I think it was this one. Let me see. I need that line there. No, it wasn't that line. This line maybe. Whoops. Let's see. Okay, syntax error missing where? For 50, I gotta read my numbers here, 64. What? Oh, right here, <laughs> look it's going way down here, but it's actually here. Okay, syntax error. Okay, now we got it. Okay, short n, n equals five, right? I'm trying to put the value of five into n here into our Right, five is the number of elements, okay? Let's run it. There we go, let's go, we got her. That's a lot of pain though, guys, but that's how you do it, okay? There's this concept of vectors too, which I'm gonna get into. A lot of people recommend using vectors when you're working like this. Um, but here we go. There's garbage. Okay. Finally returned garbage and we deallocated it, right? By using delete. Let's go. Okay. What's next? Okay. I'm done with that. Um, I don't know if I explained briefly, but okay, let's say, um, there's different ways, like last stream, I'm like, you guys just type it this way. Okay. And, uh, you wouldn't, you won't have any problems, right? You won't have any VLA issues or, uh, constant what was that called again? Expression did not evaluate to a constant, right? If you type it like this, you're not gonna have any issues. Where is, um, I want, I'm looking for prime numbers. Where are my prime numbers? Nine oh four. Yeah, we're close. I'm looking for, no, it was in arrays. That's what it was. Where is array? Where are you arrays? This is supposed to make it quicker for me to find stuff. What is an array? Where's arrays? Arrays, here we go, 654. Okay, here we go. This is what I'm looking for, right? An example array. Okay, control home. Okay, there. Okay, so I created an array. You guys, so, so, to take note, you don't actually ha have to tell um, the program or the compiler how many elements you have. It's intelligent enough to figure it out on its own. So you can leave your square brackets empty. I have one, two, three, four, five, six in this case. I mean, I could type six but you don't need to, okay? 
So that's one method or way of typing. Okay, here's the other way. Okay, there's two, two ways of doing it. You could take away the equal sign and it works just as well. Okay, guys? Just wanted to show you those two different ways of doing it. So we're declaring and initializing our array, essentially. Remember, these are all elements, okay? They're all elements. Okay, um... Skipping commercial. Okay, let's get into something else. So finally I got through that, guys. I worked hard for you guys to put that together, so I hope you appreciate it. Make sure my uh, program's running good, yeah. <clears throat> okay, we're getting through this. We're getting to the end of it. I need my other example I put together for you guys. Let's see, which one is that? 40 to 42? Okay, when to use new operator on the heap. Rename, I gotta fix. Open. Okay, here we go. More examples for you guys, okay? So, Yeah, I'm getting into it now. No. Okay, remember I was talking about no? Is no equal to equal to zero in C++, right? That's not where I wanted to type it because this is a multi-line comment. Okay, that's the question, right? type up some stuff for you. Uh, null is, let's go, null is defined as zero. Okay, guys? Null or zero is an integer, of course, right? We know this, right? And I don't know why I can't type integer. I don't know. Maybe I think the word doesn't deserve two E's. I don't know. Float. Okay, I don't know why I typed it like that, but float. P equals null. Okay. Some examples. Float. P. Uh, why do I have it twice? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Null and then equals zero, right? Just different ways of typing it up, guys. It all means the same. Okay, and uh, float. So three different ways of typing it. Float P equals null PTR. All right, and then all three of them will produce the same result. Okay, guys? There you go. Some notes for you in a nutshell. All right, let's type up some code. Short int. Pointer. We'll just call it PTR1. Okay? Equals null. Right? You can see it actually come up. It's actually in our list here, right? There's no pointer as well. Okay. PTR1 equals new short int. Okay. This is how you type it up, guys. Float pointer PTR2 equals new float. And we're going to put some values in there. Okay, 223 decimal 324. Okay, putting value in there, a decimal value. That's what float is, right? And PTR1 
equals 68. Okay, that's currently the number of subscribers on this channel. Let's go. Turn it up. Remember, guys, sharing is caring. Okay, let's... Uh, do I have everything typed up properly? I hope so. Double check. PTR1 equals uh, new short ant. Floats. Uh, pointer PTR2 equals new floats. Values. Uh, pointer PTR1 equals 68. Okay, let's return it. Let's see some return. Backslash N. Value of pointer variable one okay and we got to return it right you need to point it to return it the value right you need the asterisk to return the value okay take note of that guys okay i'm going to copy this otherwise you would get the memory address if you do it the other way okay value of pointer Ha, what's a variable? You guys know what a variable is? I'm just curious. Is that a new thing? I don't know. It sounds sounds delicious though. Mmm, variables. Oh, I haven't had a variable in so long. Yeah, I have no idea. Okay, two. End line. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna end line there. Why not? Remember, remember, we need this, guys. Okay. When we're using new. Okay, delete. Got to clean it up. You got to clean up the heap. This is how you clean up the heap. All right, guys. There we go. Delete pointer one. No asterisks. Okay. And pointer two. Okay. That's the actual name of the variable. All right. And some more information. The new... I know I have this type somewhere. I think I do. I'll have to have a look. Okay. So let's run this. Okay. So you can see. All right. It should return these values. Okay. Remember, we're we're storing on the heap. Right. And then we're cleaning up the heap. Heap. Puh. All right. Let's go. There we go. Let's go. Yay. for horses am I watching here <laughs> hey namaste namaste Ayush Kumar welcome welcome great to see you my friend great to see you give me a quick shout out um, let's see Ayush, good to see you, my guy. There we go. What? <laughs> Let's go. I got to fix up my stream elements a little bit, but that's okay. No biggie. Little things. Okay, these vibes are kind of like, I don't know. I'm going to change up the vibes here a little bit. Let's see. What do we want to listen to? Yeah, no. I got to wait till the commercial ends. <laughs> yeah yeah imagine negative 30 fahrenheit and you have to charge your batteries and you're in the middle of nowhere yeah good one electric have fun with that that won't go well up in the north i'm telling you that'd be the worst day ever minus 30 fahrenheit and your batteries are so cold, your garbage electric vehicle won't run. And you have no heat. And you're in the middle of 
tup to tup to yuck tuck. Yeah, good one. All right, there we go. Value point or variable one is 68. Valuable value of point or variable two is 200. And yada, yada, yada. Let's go. Isn't that awesome? Do I have more to do? Oh, yeah, I was going to look a uh, new operator. What I was going to look for? No pointer, right? Control and no pointer. Do I have that in here somewhere? I swear I do. Here we go. 282. <clears throat> I got lots of good information. I've been building up on my... Uh, uh, for educational and learning purposes only. Okay, I've been building up on this for you guys. Okay, uh, I already had this, but there was something else I was going to type. I'm not sure where I put it, but I guess I'll type it up. Okay, the new operator is used to... <clears throat> Did I... Maybe I already read all this before, but... <clears throat> <coughs> I need to stop talking, I think. Initialize. It's almost time for break, guys. Come on. Come on, typing fingers. Work with me. here for you guys Are displayed basically means return to console okay okay and then finally the delete right same thing operator is used to clean free the memory to free the memory or clean up the heat, right, if you will. I hope this helps you guys out a lot. Um, I hope it does. I loved it. I loved going through this and uh, getting this information for you guys. Okay, so where do I want to go again? Uh, do I need a new operator maybe? I want to save that information. Let's see, let's see, 745, uh, I don't think I need to, I'm going to, so every time I add information, I have to update all my lines in my table of contents, okay, control home, I'm going to control Z, Okay, and skip commercial. And I think it's break time, guys. I think I got everything done I wanted to. Did I? I hope so. Let me double check. Uh, no. Okay, I'm going to get into that after, okay? After break, I'm going to get into a little bit more. And then uh, I have lots, man. You guys, I have lots I have planned. Um, just trying to fit it all in. If I miss anything on this stream, I'll carry it to the next stream. That's how I, that's how I do. Okay, here we go. What are we going to get into next? We're going to get into, we're going to do uh, 
some functions. We're going to work on some functions and classes. Okay, guys? So stay tuned after the break for that. Uh, hopefully I can sweat this out quick enough for you guys. Um, yeah, I got to finish that. All right, you guys. I won't be long. I'll try to be quick when I have my breaks. Okay, guys? Uh, viewers, you're all awesome. Uh, I want to thank Yush and Goofy Recap for dropping in today. Today's stream. Appreciate you guys. Viewers, you're all awesome. Subscribers, you're all awesome. Every single one of you legends. Um, I will, yeah, I'm going to shaddy Eddie and I'll see you guys after the break.
Hey guys, hey guys, gals, what is up? What is up? How are you doing? Thank you for staying tuned. Appreciate y'all. Let's go. Let's go. Turn it up. Line coding and mathematics is a dub. Yeah. Let's go. I appreciate you viewers. I appreciate all you lurkers and twerkers. And I especially appreciate you followers, subscribers to the channel. Let's go. Whoever you are, wherever you are, I appreciate you so much. Bless. Uh, I wish you all the best in life. Let's go. Okay. Let's continue this train. Let's continue this train. All right, all right, let's go. So I promised you guys I'd finish up. Um, let's see. Right. Okay, so you got this. I don't know if I need to save this, but um, I'm going to delete it all. Uh, you guys can rewind the content anytime. Check it out. It's there for you. Okay. Um, nothing else here. I have nothing up here. Check my program. Make sure we're good. Yes, we are. Okay. Let's get some code typed up. All right. We're going to use your prompt. Okay, what do I want to type here? I actually want to type, be specific a little bit. Uh, user, please enter. Oh, I'm going to move this. Enter uh, a value greater than or equal to five. Okay. Uh, it's kind of the smallest size. We're going to do an array here. And uh, we're going to go with that. Okay. Please enter a value greater than or equal to 5. Okay. And it must be positive. But I'm the user, so I'll enter positive values. Turn it up. Okay. So we're going to type. We're going to use a uh, built-in little thingy-madooey. It's called size T. It's right there, size T, okay, and variable length. Oh, this is going to be cool. You guys are going to love this. It's for, for an array, okay, there we go, and CN. We got to store that into length, okay, there we go. So far, so good. Size T, what is size T? Okay, maybe you want to know. Uh, in C, B, C, okay. Okay, here we go. I'll just paste this in. I should probably save it for my notes for the future. Okay, clean it up here so you can read it. Size T and C is the type returned by the size of operator and is frequently used in the standard library to describe sizes and counts. It is a type that may express the size of any object in bytes. Okay, the maximum size of an object of any type uh, that is technically feasible can be stored in size underscore T, including an array. Cool, huh? So there you go. Close this. Let's continue. 
Got lots to share with you guys. I need to speed this train up a little bit, okay? Um, so we're gonna create an array. Remember, every function starts with int, okay? Int array, you know? That's what it begins with, okay? I'm gonna call it array, whatever, okay? And in brackets, we gotta type this, okay? New int, right? We're working off of our new operator, right? New int, uh, square brackets, length. Again, code is very particular in the way you type it. Okay, hopefully it's not too confusing. Int array is new int. We're basically, yeah, doing everything in, in line here, okay? Use new, array new. Note that length does not need to be constant, okay? <clears throat> So what we're doing here basically to allocate an array dynamically, remember new dynamically, we use the array form of new should go like this and I'm just gonna type it like this okay same sort of business okay um, brackets brackets often called new and delete right I guess I could have just did it that way too okay fix that up here for you guys okay there you go all right so now let's return length okay so what have we done here uh, we've just allocated an array of integers of length it's the length and return length okay let's see what it let's see what it gives us guys backslash n there we go follow the syntax follow the proper for line proper format of line coding okay uh, and then do I need to go like this Give you guys some notes here. Okay, remember we had that error, evaluation, blah, 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 yada, 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 to a constant. There we go. Look at that. Bingo, bango, bongo. We're avoiding that problem now. Okay, so I don't know. Let's check it out. Let's just see what happens. Do I need to type more? I don't know. Let's check it out. Let's go. Please enter a value. I'm going to put five. There we go. We just allocated an array of integers of length five. Ho, oh, ho, ho. Isn't that slick? That is so slick. That's what I was trying to do last stream, guys. We got her. This is how you do. Okay, so array zero. Right now we're actually actually, actually skipping commercials. So what we're doing here now, guys? So so uh, index position wrong syntax zero. Okay, array. Okay, the name of our array is array. Okay, uh, we're we're telling we're gonna give the an array some information an element okay there we go we just basically gave the array an index position zero the value of five so this equal this is this is an element okay all right 
And then we got to delete a rate, right? I should have probably had that already in there, but that's okay. So let's just run it. We could run it, but I must delete my array, right? Okay, so here, basically set element zero to value five in, in, in essence, right? Okay, and then here, use array delete to deallocate array, okay? So basically take it off the heap, right? Essentially. Okay, and then some more notes. We don't need to set, I'm just gonna type, I'm gonna be lazy with my typing because it's going out of scope, right? With the delete immediately after <clears throat> this anyway. Okay. Uh, because, I'll type it this time, we are allocating an array C++ knows that it should use the array version of new instead of the, this is a new concept, <clears throat> scalar version, okay, of new, okay? Hopefully we get into that in the future, guys. Do stay tuned. All right, some notes for you, okay? So I have um, put a value in for index position zero, but we're immediately deleting it after. We're not really returning its value. So there we go. And that's it, right? We immediately deleted it off the heap after or deallocated, okay? All right, let's get into this. I'm going to I'm going to take this a little bit further here, okay? <clears throat> okay, let's see. Uh this line here I'll put some more notes for you guys. If you want to uh, initialize a dynamically allocated array to zero, the syntax is as follows, okay? That's it right here, guys, okay? Right there. This line here is key. Okay, then you don't have that evaluate to a constant blah, blah, blah error. Okay, remember this line. It's very similar. It's gonna be consistent all the time. Okay, so I wanna do something cool here. You guys got all these notes. Uh, I'm going to try to save them for the future. Okay, so let's see. We got this line, user prompt, right? This I call it a user prompt. Okay, it's all the same. All right, I explained this. It's down here. This is storing the value, the user entered value into length, okay? And then we just returned it with this line, right? That's all. 
return to value five. And we're gonna do something cool here now, guys. So I'm gonna go like this. I took it up a notch here, okay? Taking it up a notch. So again, index position zero has the value five, okay? But I'm gonna do something else now. Let's get the user to enter these values. Wouldn't that be cool? So I could delete this because this is gonna change. All right, I don't need this line anymore either. You've already seen that. Okay, so let's prompt the user again. Please enter. Uh, let's see, do I need all this still? Yeah. Yeah, please enter your, this is kind of neat how I do it, uh, length, right? Returning the actual value. Okay. Elements, right? If they understand. I guess I get question mark it. Right? And now we got to create, I'll just use short int. We got to create. We got to, uh, yeah, let's create some uh, variables, okay? E0, E1, E2, E3, E4, and that's it, right? We have five now, right? Five elements, zero to four. Remember, we count from ones, guys, but when you're working with line coding and computers, they start with zero, okay? Remember that. That is a position. Okay, so let's bring this back up. So array zero is now gonna equal to, all right, we have to store it in yet. We still have to store it in. You could do everything in line here, guys. It's really cool. Okay, this is how you do it in line. Uh, three. And E4. Okay, that's storing it back in. <clears throat> right? Everything's in line. Much cleaner, right? We're getting the user to enter five different values. Okay. They he entered this is entering the size of our array, and then th this is entering our elements. Okay. So array zero is gonna be E4. E zero. Okay. And I'm just going to go like this. And this is going to be E one. This is going to be E two, E three and E four. Wow. Isn't that slick? Pretty awesome. Huh guys? Always have the delete delete array after. Okay. Now let's return it. Let's see. Let's check it out. See if it works. Uh, these are our user entered elements and that's awesome. I'm good at typing. I know. Okay. And I'll just do this. There we go. See out, uh, element zero. Okay. I could go is. I guess it's all good, right? And then we got to return this. Whoops, I got I got to do this as well. That would really confuse the program. Okay, I fixed it up, guys. I got it. Same stream, guys. Same stream. It's not five videos later. All right, cool. <laughs> so here we go. Let's return it. Okay, and. Actually, I have a different way of doing this because I'm not going to put an enter or this is a basically returning a value, right? So this is how you do it if you want an enter. Okay, boom, put it next line. 
There we go. Boom. Okay, and one. Change our value. Okay, and so on. Let's get the rest. So two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. There we go. And then afterwards, we're going to clean up the heap. Okay? Check it out, guys. Oh, this is awesome. This is awesome. Uh, some more notes, starting with C++11. Okay, I'm on 17, version, I guess, 17, if you will. Now possible to initialize dynamic. I got a commercial again, sounds like. <clears throat> Show me the money. <clears throat> That's what I say. You want me to play your commercials on my stream? Show me the money. <laughs> That's how it goes. Okay. Uh, where was I here? Dynamic. Yeah. Dynamic arrays using initializer list. Right? Initializer list. Arrays, initializer list. Correspond that in your brain. Arrays equal initializer list. Okay? All right. You guys want to see it now? You do. You want to see it, don't you? All right. Let's go. Okay. Our array size, because I know what it is, it's going to be five. Okay? <clears throat> oh! Let's go. Please enter your five elements. Let's go. I don't know. Random numbers. Twelve. Well, I could have used a space there. I'll fix it up. Little things, guys. Um, I don't know. Forty-five. Um, I don't know. Thirty-two. Um, eight. And six. Let's go. Let's go. Turn that up. Oh, I love it. I love it when a plan comes together, right? What movie was that? It's, it's an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. I'm sure of it. No, is that the A-Team? Yeah, maybe that's the A-Team. Old school. I love it when a plan comes together and he's got a big cigar. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. Okay, uh, where did I need? I needed elements, right? Um, user prompt. And I need a space right there. Let's run it again one more time, guys. Okay. So now we can tell the program the size of our array, right? In this case, I'm just, for example, I'm going to use five. Okay. Minimum. And then we're going to go with some random numbers again. <laughs> These are our user entered. Of course, I can't type entered. Isn't that awesome? Looks good, though. Uh, elements. 0 is 12, 43, 65, 14, and 9. Let's go. Turn it up, invisible audience. <laughs> oh, that's slick. I love it. Okay, how are we doing here? Um, okay, music's good. I want to see what happened here. Boy, did this ever derp. <laughs> see if I can fix it. I have to fix it up here. Something's going wrong. Control X, Control V. There we go. <laughs> and then, I don't know, I should save this stuff, but I kind of have it in my notes. Uh, what do we have to get into? Uh, na, 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 na. Yeah, they're kind of good notes for you guys. So I'm going to put this underneath the rays somewhere. Save it in my 10 mile long document here. Program. Uh, Master Sandeep. 
Hello, namaste, namaste, my friend. Thank you for stopping by again. Let's go. Appreciate you. Gonna shout you out here quickly. Just looking for a raise. I'm a bit more organized. I actually have a table of contents now. Let's see. A raise, a raise, a raise. 654. 654, a raise. And I get into enumeration, but also this is I'm working with the new operator here as well. I'm just trying to figure out here on the fly where I want this. Should I put it with new operator, 456? Four, five, six, new operator, memory leak. I didn't actually get into memory leak. I should maybe, huh? Okay, let me paste this here. I'll figure it out later, guys. Okay, uh, memory leak. Okay, I didn't get into that, right? believe I read the new operator stuff. I hope so. Okay, the new operator in C is used to allocate memory dynamically, okay, for a variable or an object at runtime, right? That's why we have the um, <clears throat> expression did not evaluate to a constant issue, right? So, four, five, six, am I at? Okay. So, yeah, I think I read all this. Okay, what is a memory leak? In computer science, a memory leak is a type of resource leak that occurs when a computer program incorrectly manages memory allocations in such a way that memory, which is no longer needed, is not released, okay? Right? That's why the delete command is used, okay, guys? Okay. Critical. Got to clean up the heap, right? Delete is an operator that is used to destroy array and non-array pointer objects, which are dynamically created, okay, dynamically, keyword, by the new operator, right? The delete operator destroys the object created with new by deallocating the memory associated with the object. Okay, delete operator works only for objects allocated using, of course, this is repetitive, but there you go. Here's an example line, right? New operators right here. All right, cool, guys. Let's go. <clears throat> okay, we need to carry this train on. Wow, we're running out of time here. I wonder if I have time to do... Do I have time to do a class? Depends how large it is. Let's see, where am I here? Just looking at my lesson plan I put together for the stream, guys. Uh, yeah, I might have it. Yeah, I might have time for this. Okay, maybe it'll be classes tomorrow, guys. I apologize. I need to get into mathematics at the end of the stream. So thank you for understanding. It's kind of a mixed bag over here. Win-win uh, for all you guys. Uh, okay, I'll worry about it later. But um, function. Let me just look at it and see how big it is. I'm just wondering if I should go into keep arrays going and then we'll just start with functions tomorrow. Let's have a look. Okay. Um, yeah, that's kind of long. Let's see. Look at my practice here. Uh, here. I mean, it looks fairly quick, actually. Fairly short. Yeah, I could type this code up pretty quick. Uh, let's check out the other one. Uh, right here. 
46 to 47. Yeah, this might take a little longer. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do this one. We're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna do classes. We're gonna do a class now, guys. Okay. Because it's shorter, the other one is I was gonna do is a little bit longer. Okay, so I'm gonna I like this. I typed this up, guys, and this is what I did just for you guys, okay? Because I love to help you guys learn and grow. I'm learning and growing over here too. All right. Um, test the program for golden. I had to make some more coffee too. That's why I might have been a little long during break. Sorry, guys. Got to have the coffee. It's feeling the machine here, you know? All right, let's start. <clears throat> okay, where do we put classes? Okay, we're getting into classes now. Let's do a class for fun. Okay, I'm going to type up a little simple class um, program. Okay, uh, with public uh, access modifier. Okay, I've done private in the past, so follow the series. Um. I'm going to skip a commercial here. Okay, let's get going. So classes, okay. Uh, three main areas of your line coding essay. All right. One, uh, are we doing a one, two, three step? No, it's the one, two step. Really, we're actually we're not doing functions. But anyways, where do classes go? Classes go above a blah, a blah, 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 Gary Clarkson! above your int main function okay this is where all the magic happens inside the main body all right if you if you've noticed okay classes also go up top all right uh, my first function here that i created is kind of at the top so we'll keep it there it's going to be outside our class. This class is going to be called computer. Because, hey, I love computers. All right. If you typed it properly, you will get a semicolon. That means you're doing things properly. Okay. Public access modifier. Uh, string. Declaring a string. Okay. PC name. We need some variables. PC info and pc store all right just for funsies okay we need a float okay retail cost all right money's in decimals right because we have cents right dollars and cents right guys use a float short int pc savings i'm gonna call it there we go um uh, take note this is public access, okay, guys? Um, let's carry on. Let's do a void function, okay? Whoops. Void, okay, intro system. Basically, introducing the system, okay? <clears throat> this is a void function. All right, it's inside our class. Okay, guys, take note. This function is inside our class. This is stuff that I can like, whoops, <laughs> what am I doing? This is stuff that I can grasp per fairly easily. Okay, backslash n, gaming desktop, okay? Maybe it's not just a gaming desktop. You could get a gaming desktop and use it for multitasking, right? It'll still grind for you. Okay. Over here, I design and build my own systems. Uh, I built mine. The one I'm, I'm teaching with you guys right now, I built. I designed and built this system. Okay. All my specs are in Discord. So check out Discord, I guess, if you want to see the specs. Um, okay, there we go. See out. 
backslash n gaming desktop pc name okay we have public access all right <clears throat> this means that the void function has access access to these variables all right it's local local all right because we have pa public access remember when you have private access setters and getters okay see out uh <clears throat> i am at store location pc store all right we're just typing up the class and our getting our void function done here because we're going to call this function in our main body all right guys all right comma and m regular cost dollar sign no space retail cost okay and we'll use end line because why not all right see out one more see out another line pc specs Okay, PC info, our return value, comma, and come today, you can save dollar sign and PC savings. Okay, guys, and a little bit more text. Okay, now, and then end line. Uh, I could, since I have a string literal here, I could just go backslash n and semicolon. Okay, no need for an end line. All right, normally that's kind of what I do. I'll put end line after a, a variable. And then when you have string literal, string a series of text, array of characters, in your double quotations, backslash n. Okay. All right. That's done. Okay. Now we're outside our void. Okay. All these variables are public access. Right. Public is an access modifier. All right. Or specifier. It's all the same. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato, it all cooks the same. Okay. Our class is called computer, right, guys? <clears throat> okay, this is a constructor. All right. Normally, you see a constructor, it just looks like this, okay, within your program, okay? That's a simple constructor. What are constructors? Well, constructors run automatically okay this is key to know okay they're they run automatically okay guys in this case we're going to put some info and some information inside our parentheses all right and this is the link right you don't need to type the variable names the same because the computers, the compiler's intelligent enough. You just got to be consistent with how you type it all out, right? It'll link it to each other. So PCN, and I'll show you guys how to link it, okay? String PCN, string PCS, okay? Float, RTC. String PCI. We're putting we're putting we're not putting two or three over here on Whiskey Tango. We're going all out here, guys. Okay? No little baby steps here anymore. No more no more yeah. <laughs> okay. 
I'm going to show you something too, but I'm just going to leave it like that for now. So string PCN, string PCS, flow RTC, string PCI. I forgot a comma. Okay. All right. Check your line code. Make sure everything's good. Short int PCV. All right. Um, whoops. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Silly me. No semicolon. I do have to cut this out though. Control X. Because I don't want the program glitching on me here. Okay. We need a body. We need a body for our function. <laughs> okay. No semicolon. Always a body with your constructor. Okay, we're up in the class and we're working inside the class. Okay, guys? So here's the link. PC name. Okay. Equals PCN. All right. We're telling the program. PC store equals PCS. All right. Retail cost equals RTC. All right. PC info. You guys are following along, right? Makes sense, right? PCI. And lastly, PC savings equals PCV. There we go. This is inside our constructor, guys. This is a constructor. All right. It automatically runs, remember? All right, let's carry on. Now we have to do the magic. Okay, we gotta feed the program some information so it can return it, right? So we're done in here, okay? Simple class, okay? Public access, blah, blah, blah. Uh, data types, variables, Void function, okay? We have to call this function. And then this is our constructor. And our construct constructor has parameters, okay? One, two, three, four, five of them, okay? Now let's go to our main body. All right, now we're in the main, okay? How do we call this stuff? Okay, remember, this is a constructor, okay? All right, guys, I'm going to show you other examples of like how you can type up your code in the main body with just using your uh, variables. OK. And what I mean is I'm talking about these. OK, there's another method or or way of doing it as well. In this case, we're using our constructor. OK. Computer, right? Now I'm creating an object, okay? PC is our first object. Uh, equal, first object is equal to computer, right? Our function, remember, take note guys, take note. Always, 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 our constructor has the same name as the class, always, okay? Take note. All right. You don't have to think. You already thought of the name right here. Our constructor has the same name as the class. Okay. Okay. So this is our class. Right. Object equals our constructor. And then we're going to give it some information, right? Remember, string PCN, string PCS, or float, or string, follow the format, be consistent. Okay, first we're going to enter our PC name. Okay, in this case, where did I go, Batman? How did I even get there? <laughs> okay, inside our double quotes. AEGIS R13 32GB just giving it some basic general information this is what the system has it's not a bad little system to be honest I got a 30 series graphics card it grinds out well still golden okay uh, location 
Okay, is our next one, right? PC store. Okay, that's where it is. Comma. Okay, how much is it? Now it's our float value. All right, comma. And PCI is PC info. Okay, so a little, some more info about the system, right? That's all. Oh, what processor does it have? It has an i7, 13th gen. See, I could talk PC all day. This this stuff I I can I got down. All right, I design them. I design PCs. Being modest here, guys, but I can. Okay, and how much? Uh, what's our last one? PCV savings. Ooh, how much can we save? Ooh, that much? That's awesome. All right, so let's in introduce our system. Now we're going to use our void function. So we get, we fed the compiler some information, right? <clears throat> okay, so class object equals constructor constructor takes all the information now we have to have to use our void function okay now let's let's return this let's make our void function do some magic okay so this is how you do it our object dot and our function right it's in the list right you can use actually any one of these but we're gonna use we're gonna use our function, okay? That easy, because we've already fed the information, right? So I'm just calling it an object, object name. That's the way I look at it. Dot separator, and then our function, right? In this case, it's a void function, right? dot separator did I even type that properly no <laughs> I didn't even type dot my brain's so far in the game okay here we go let's check it out hopefully I typed everything okay uh, the color of my font looks good everything looks consistent you can't have a theme for your program in Visual Studio you can have any different variety of colors. Okay. Um, yeah, it looks good. I hope so. Let's check it out. Commas, commas. Yeah. Remember, syntax and semantics. Okay. Oh! Gaming desktop. This is part of our void function. This is all the information from our constructor, right? I am at store location, Tustin, Colorado, and am regular cost, $2,999.99. PC specs, Intel Core i and, of course I didn't type seven, 13th gen uh, at, what kind of frequency is that, Batman? Uh, yeah, 2.1, yeah, it's fine. Okay, and come today, you can save $600 now. Let's go. Not bad, not bad. Nice 7, 13th gen. <laughs> I mean, that's a good deal. I paid almost four grand for mine. Piece by piece, I bought it. I think it was four grand, at least $3,500. <clears throat> Let's go. Okay, I have to fix that up. I meant to type I7. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's do another one. You guys want to do another one? Oh, you could do more. No way. Well, you need a new object. Okay. Can't use the same object. You need a new object. Okay. <clears throat> All right. What is this one? It's an ASUS system. Ooh, ASUS. ROG Strix. GA15. 
it's got 16 gigabytes of memory and it has an RTX 3080. Decent, decent, not bad, not bad. Where's this one located? Rockville, Michigan. Okay. And it's worth, ooh, man, my budget, my budget, ooh, not bad, not bad, 1600 bucks. Let's go, must be nice to buy stuff for so cheap. Pay like, I don't know, three, three over, three times, not three times, what's three divided by two? So times that by three divided by two, that's probably what, what I'm paying. 1600. 1600 divided by oh no 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 do your math 1600 times three divided by two 20 2400 all day for a system like that here okay uh this one is amd amd is usually cheaper at least it has a dedicated graphics card it's a 3080 or a 30 series okay and AMD Ryzen 7, 5800X. Decent system. And this one's frequency at 3.8, okay? Gigahertz. All right, now we have a value that's unknown. We don't know how much it's saving, okay? So if you want a value returned, okay, here's, here's a little trick. Uh, let's see, where is that? Right here, up in our, up in our constructor, you can actually assign a value, okay? PCV equals zero, all right? In case there is no savings, right? So up in our constructor, just say PCV equals zero, all right? That way we get a return of something. Make sense? This one has no savings. Uh, should work, right? Do I need that other? Yeah, uh, let me just test it first. Okay, let's run it. Okay, same thing guys, same thing. But use the right object, okay? PC2, let's in introduce this system, okay? Uh, make sure my information's good. U16, 3080, RTX, yeah. Rockville, yeah. Oh, didn't type that correctly. There we go. Michigan. Okay, let's run it. Oh, let's go. See that, guys? Whoops. Turn it up. Okay, you want to see what happens if I don't have that in our constructor? Okay, if I take that out, what's going to happen, guys? Okay, we actually assigned it a value here. Okay, inside our parameters. Okay, what happens when I don't do that? We get errors. Okay, it needs a value. Okay, let's run it again. There we go. So now you know, right? So I'm at store location, Rockville, Michigan. Regular cost, $15.99. PC specs. Come today, you can save no money. But hey, it's still, you know, a decent system. So at least it has a decent brand name motherboard. Okay. I don't want to get into PCs, but uh, if your motherboard is green... <laughs> That's all I could say. All right. I have a saying too. It's Resident Evil. It's from the movie. Resident Evil movie. One of them. My SHT is custom. Let's go. That's right. Custom. Okay. There you go. So you'll have errors if you don't put the zero. Okay. I can actually add one more line. Okay. I can also do this, guys inside our void function, all right? If, 
have a little simple if statement. PC savings. Okay, is not equal to zero. Whoops, zero. Okay, that's it. That's it. No curly brackets, nothing. If PC savings, make sure I type things properly, is not equal to zero. Okay, what happens? You see the difference? Okay, in our case, we had no value, right? So it didn't return this line, right? You notice that? I put this above this line. This is the line that's not being returned. Okay, if it's not equal to zero, right? In this case, it's equal to zero, right? It has no value, right? We didn't enter any value here inside our main body, okay? There's nothing. Okay, so I'll run it again. Little differences, right, in your code. See, it doesn't r run that third line. Little things, okay? So if I actually put a value here, let's say they're going to save $350. Okay, so now we should get everything, okay, because so, now we have a value. All right, guys? Let's go. Let's go. Turn that up, baby. Let's go. Ooh, I love these vibes. Oh, I forgot to shout you out quickly. Uh, bah, 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 bah. I got to get into mathematics. No break. I'm going to continue on here, guys. Running out of time. We are going to get into radicals. Yeah. Here, let me bring my code up here so you can see it. Maybe right here. Okay, so you guys can see it. Uh, okay. Um, All right. I hope your day is going great. I gotta I gotta work some little bugs in Stream Elements still. Uh, I had to turn this off so that is it gonna pop up? There it is. It's my background when the action happens in the stream, so I just have to turn it off. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's check out some commands here. Oh, did I type that properly? No. Okay. Now you can type commands in here. They should be running, but, you know, buggy. Stream elements. I do have commands. Mm-mm-mm. My bot is asleep. All right. Time, boys and girls. It is time. Let me cross off what I did. 44 to 45. Just got to make sure I cross it off. Yeah, say that I'm done that. There we go. Golden. Now, I didn't get everything done as usual, but that's okay, guys. You will see it tomorrow. All right, so stay tuned. Follow the series if you're behind. Uh, start on the first floor, first step. Okay. First floor, first step, boys and girls. 
I was going to do more where you actually have a user enter values, but uh, we need more time. All right, what time is it? What time is it? I don't know what time it is. Let's go, let's go, let's go, boys and girls, brothers, sisters here on YouTube. It's Johnny. Thank you for watching. Viewers, those that hit the, the like button, subscribers, every single one of you that I'm talking about, you guys are all awesome. Appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for the support. Let's go. Okay, save this, control end. We got to go to our mathematics area. I'm changing it up now, guys, changing it up. I'm working in math is a dub. We're actually going to change it because now we are on radicals because they're rad, guys. Okay, radicals are rad. Remember that. And I'm in area 941, somewhere in there. It's going to be close. Okay, yeah, we're in here. Rational numbers. Do I, I don't know if I want to delete this, but ay, 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 do I delete it? I don't know. <sighs> oh, music. Keep that playing. Okay, I gotta go back to my table of contents. I'm gonna undo, undo, undo. Where are we here? Undo. Uh, here we go. Undo. Z Z. Whoa. Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z. Okay. We're gonna add in a new area here. Line something. I'll figure it out. Nine forty one. I'm just gonna call it. And radicals okay dun, 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 dun. never know maybe I'll be doing some long division or something who knows okay new area radicals all right let's expand there we go gives give us some room here to work Okay, radicals. What are radicals, guys? What are radicals? Okay. Gold leaf is so thin that one dollar's worth would cover a square with an area of 3,600. For those that are in metric system, centimeters squared. <laughs> Hilarious. Close. Okay. All right. So the length of a side of a square of the square in centimeters is 60, right? Because this is what we know. We know 60, right? Of course, you know, six times six equals 36. Don't let the big numbers scare you guys, right? Just ignore the zeros, right? 60 times 60, right? We got two zeros. Therefore, when we multiply them together, we have two more zeros. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, I can't really write. Uh, let's see, what does the square root symbol look like? Okay, square root alt symbol. Okay, it is Alt-251, okay? Alt plus 251, okay? Tap, tap. Alt-251. Okay, there you go. That's the square root symbol, okay? I can't keep it in here because, well, Visual Studio, it's not designed to use this symbol, okay? And plus, it's not even a symbol on the keyboard, right, guys? 
if it's not on the keyboard it just doesn't work you know remember ascii table guys so it doesn't recognize this symbol therefore even though i am in comments a multi-line comment it'll still argue okay just wanted to show you what the square root symbol looks like okay so I don't know, like, it's going to be hard for me because I would prefer to use it for our all intents and purposes. So therefore, as long as I don't run my program, right? The square root of 3600 equals 60. This is how I teach my kid, right? Okay, you have plus. What's the opposite of plus? If I could type. Well, that's negative, right? Okay. Multiply. What's the opposite of molt? Divide right okay um what's the opposite of i need a squared symbol here so let's say you have x squared right what's the opposite of squared not that <laughs> this Okay, guys, that easy to remember, right? Everything kind of is balance, mathematics balance. Call it a game, balancing. Why I cannot mathematics balancing game? Yeah. <laughs> okay we're getting into radicals okay guys uh and then there's also another one but i'm not going to get into it now right so it's going to be i wonder if i could actually get that um just let me see if i can alt function it Just looking here I want to see if there's an alt code for it uh, no alt code you could use Unicode decimal hex number or HTML entity in social websites okay I was wanting a quick alt code I don't think this will work for cube root okay so basically what it looks like is um, it has a three in front of it that's cube root okay all right this is square root so essentially it's two right makes sense what two numbers multiply together to give you that? Okay, cube root is three numbers, right? So 60 times 60 times 60, okay? What does that equal, right? Do you know on the top of your head? Six times three is 18. Sixty times sixty times sixty. Okay, no. Equals two one six comma zero zero zero. Okay, six times six times six equals two hundred and sixteen. Right. 
So therefore, the cube root of 200,000, can I even, 216,000. Wow, can I read numbers? Yeah, awesome. So the cube root of 260,000, okay. Control X and in brackets to simplify equals 60. There, that's probably the easiest way I could share it. Okay, that song's almost over because it's, uh, yeah. All right, let's carry on. Okay, expressions such as square root of 3,600 and the cube root of 8,000 are all called radicals, okay? Radicals occur when we work with square roots and cube roots of numbers, okay? Square roots. There we go. What's next? So the square root of n, so if I go like this, um, so right, square would be two, right, of n, okay? But I don't need the two because it's inferred two, right? Square roots, just two values. Okay, means the principal square root of n. Okay, find the square root of 1600. Okay, so in your math book, right, find. Okay, A. All right, let's say this is our math book. And it's asking us for this. I'm going to get rid of the two. I don't know why that happens to me all the time, but it does. Okay, 1600. Here's the easiest way to do it, guys. Okay, just ignore the zeros. Okay. Simplify it in your mind, right? It's not that difficult. Okay, I'm being nice here. What two values multiplied together, they have to be the same values, equals 16. Again, times table, right? Highly recommend that you study your times table. All right? Well, what do you know, right? Ask yourself, what... Do I know? Well, I know that 4 times 4 equals 16. Oh, wow. Look at that. 16, I see. So remember, we're splitting it in half, right? We have two zeros, right? Remember, um, two zeros, if you take 60 times 60, you have one zero here, one zero here bring them together as one big family, you have two zeros. Well, that means when you square root, I don't know how I did that. Square, you know that four times four is 16. Okay, so equals, put four. We have two zeros. Well, our, we only have a single value being returned. Therefore, it's 40, right? Which also means... Oh, goodness gracious. 40 times 40 equals 1,600. Okay, all the same. All right, one zero here, one zero here, combined together. Okay, they're trying to, now they're trying to make it more challenging here. 
Okay, they're asking us for work with me program, please. 2.25. Okay, they're trying to mess with your brain here a little bit. All right. Okay, well, we don't really have the times tabled figured out. But remember, when you're working with square roots, it's the same value times itself, okay, essentially. So let's just ignore the decimal for now, right? 225, okay, it's actually not equal to. Let's do a what do, you, what do I know, okay, what do I know? Skitty Scattle commercial. Okay, so, well, well, you could do it longhand, I guess, right? And try to figure it out. We need, we need to figure out 225. Just ignore the decimal for now, okay? Just simplify it in your brain. Okay, work it out. Four times, two times two is four. Of course, I'm ahead of myself. Cross multiply, two times one is two. Okay, that's the ones row. Now we're working in the tens row. Okay, that means you need a place filler. Okay, if you've been following along, you know this stuff. Okay, tens row. One times two, well, that's two. One times one, well, that's one. Okay. Time to sit here, pay attention to time. Okay, so now it's just addition. All right, simple addition now. Four plus zero, well, obviously it's four. Two plus two is four. Bring down the one. Okay, well, we're not close to 225. Wonder if I can copy that. Hmm. Let's try a bigger number, okay? We could jump to 14, right, and try that. Sometimes you gotta work it out because you don't have all these values memorized, right? You only go up to what, 11, maybe 10? Okay, you gotta figure it out. You might have to actually figure it out, right? Five times five is 25. Now we get a carry, right? We always add our carry. Okay, five times five, 25. Put the five down, that's our ones. Carry the tens number, okay? Cross multiply, five, we're working on this five right here, right? Take this five times that five. Now cross multiply, five times one, five, plus two is seven. Okay, again, place filler, because we're done with the ones row. Now we're working on the tens row. One times five is five. One times, right, we have nothing to carry. One times five is five, one times one is one. Again, plus. Okay. Five. Seven plus five, 12. We have a one carry, right? So one plus one is two, right? I didn't show the carry, but it's there. 5 plus 0, 5. 7 plus 5, 12. Carry the 1. There's an imaginary 1 there, right? I know I didn't show it, but it's there. Okay, 1 plus 1 is 2. 225. Let's go. There it is. Okay, so write down 15. Now we're working with a decimal, right? Okay, where does the decimal go? Okay, just split. We got two jumps. Okay. 
Look at this one here. We have two jumps. We can start from the back. One, two. Okay. Well, because we're squaring it, we'll split it in half. It's one jump with the decimal. Therefore, the square root of 2.25 is 1.5. You see that? I only went one jump in. This valley has one, two jumps. We're squaring it. We're square rooting it. Get my terminology here correct. Okay. The decimal doesn't go there. No, that's two jumps. Nay, nay. That's not where the decimal is. Okay. <clears throat> we split it in half. One jump. Okay, uh, another problem. C. Okay, new problem. We're just getting into the fundamentals of square roots here. I know you should have decimals down, right? Do I do decimals for you guys? I don't know. Let me know. Let me know. Right? Uh, decimals, that's what? Mid-school? Isn't it? Something like that? Right? When you're adding decimals, you get to line up your decimals. Right? When you're multiplying them, you don't have to. Anyways, that's another, that's another program entirely. Okay? So we nine. Right? So ask yourself, what do you know? What do I know? We got the value 9, right? Well, you know that 3 times 3 equals 9, right? Okay. So let's just put 3 here. Okay. So again, decimal, we have two jumps. So imaginary decimal here, right? Imaginary decimal there from right to left. One, two jumps, split it. That means we go imaginary de decimal there. We do one jump right to left, move the decimal there. Zero place filler. Pretty easy, huh, guys? Whoa. Johnny Whiskey Tango showing you the tips and tricks and uh, hopefully help help you here to keep your mind from getting bumped. There we go. So in the example, the square roots were exact. Most numbers do not have exact square roots, so, okay. The most efficient method of finding the square root of any number is to use a calculator with a square root key, right? Now, if you've done your long division and your long multiplication and long multiplication of decimals and long division of decimals, I think you've earned the right to use a calculator. You know, I'm kind of old school, right? I'm like, hey, you need to learn it the hard way before you can use it the easy way. That's that's how I roll, all right? You'll feel better about yourself because technically you're cheating with a calculator, you know? Like, I don't want to be hard or anything, but I could get my cat to use a calculator. If I could get the cat to type in the square root of 0 0.09, and return an answer. But the cat's not going to know how that answer came about, right? Anybody could type in a calculator, but do you know how that, how you came about that outcome or result, right? All right, I'll leave you alone. Uh, love ya. <laughs> do come back. Okay, since the calculator can display only a fixed number of digits, right? Significant digits, if you will. Uh, the number displayed may not be the exact square root. It may only be an approximation of the square root. Okay, so I could use a calculator. Uh, I'm going to delete all this. Okay. So it doesn't get too long on me here, right? So, um... 
right here. Okay, another example we're working on here, A. Square root, I don't need that because you know it's two values, okay? Square root of 33. Okay, of course we know that, you know, there's, if you know your multiplication table, you'll know that the only thing that is 33 is one times it's the value itself. Is 33 a prime number? No, it's not. It's a composite, but it is an odd number, right? Therefore, in your mind, you should know that you're going to get a decimal return, right? So you can use your calcula uh, calculator, right? Look for the square root symbol and go uh, 33 and then square root button. Okay, and that's what I have. It gave me... Seven four four five six two six four seven. I mean, grinding out square root of a odd number like this, it would be challenging for sure. Good thing you're not using an abacus, huh? <laughs> Some people in the world have to learn it the hard way before they get the easy way. Why do you think it's so hard? D no! Stop thinking like that. Unbelievable. Where's your mind? <laughs> this is you. <laughs> okay, so my calculator gave me to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 significant digits. Okay? We could take that to 5.7 times 10 to the whatever. Okay, and then I could go B, right? Uh, no. Did I run it by accident? Yeah. It doesn't like my square root symbol, that's why. Uh, 147. Okay. 147 square root, I have 12.124355565, okay? In my book, it rounded it, like here it rounded it to 5.745, okay? 5.745. Reason it's five is because we're rounding up, right? Twelve point twelve forty four. Now why it rounded it up? Yeah, it did. Five is here, it rounds it up. Okay, that's correct. Cube roots. Okay, we went and we'll go over the cube roots quickly now. Okay. That should have been B. That was supposed to be B. Okay, but that's okay. Let's get into cube roots. Okay, cube root means what three values, same value, right? Multiplied together. Okay, now we're not. Squaring is two numbers, two values together. Cubing is three. Okay, take note. All right, so cube root of 125. Oh, okay, so you can grind up some numbers, right? Uh, what do you know, right? Ask yourself, what do I know? Right, what do I know? Okay, well, I know that 5, because we're working like 125, so you think, oh, 25, oh, I know 5 times 5 equals 25. Okay, now we have to carry that further, right? So, we're using the same value, right? What's 25 times 5? Right? We're multiplying here. Right? We're going... 
five three times. One, two, three. Okay, five times five is 25. 25 times five is, what is it? Again, five times five is 25. Carry our two. Okay, five times five, 25. Carry the two. Five times two is 10 plus two. That's 12. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Therefore, our answer equals five. That makes sense? I hope so. Oh, wow. It's trying to go even further here. Okay, B. Okay, now it really wants to mess with you, okay? Negative 64. Oh, snap! Oh, snap! What does that mean? Oh, guys, come on. I've been teaching you this in fractions. It's not even, like, it's easy, man. Oh, look at the rule. Two negatives equal a positive. Three negatives equal a negative, okay? We're threeing here, right? Therefore, our answer is going to be three. I mean, negative, <laughs> right? It's basically we're going negative. Let's say, for example, negative four times negative four times negative four. Well, it's going to equal to, I'll just do it on the calculator real quick. Four times four times four. 64. Oh, we already got the answer. <laughs> okay. 64. All right. Therefore, our answer is negative four. That makes sense, guys? I hope so. Right. This is a what, what do I know, right? What do I know? Well, you would have started off probably with four times four equals 16. And then go 16 times 4, right? To get that extra, that third one. We're cube rooting here, guys. Cube rooting. 3, okay? So 16, 6 times 4 is 24. Six times four is 24, carry the two. Four times one, plus two, 64. There's our answer. So the cube root of negative 64 equals negative four. Right, you see it guys? You have three negatives, it's all the same, right? That's why we have negative. Okay guys? This rule, that's why I taught you guys this rule. It's gonna help you grind fractions and all these problems so much easier. Remember, you're multiplying, right? Multiply two negatives together, you get positive. You multiply three negatives together, you get negative, okay? It works the same, the opposite, okay? I don't care if you have three, five, seven, nine, 11, 15, 31 negatives. It's always going to be negative. All right? Feel me? I hope so. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're golden. You could do even fourth and fifth roots. Like, literally. You could go crazy. Right? So, not only are you limited to cube rooting you give fourth root right we don't know the answer for that okay don't want to scare you off here but you could right we could really take it to another level here so for example okay we don't know what that is okay so What's the fourth root of 16? 
right? Pretty simple. So you're talking about four numbers being multiplied together now, okay? Well, just start with something easy. Our 16 is a low value. Well, we know that two times two equals four. Well, times another two equals eight times another two equals 16. Therefore, two times two times two times two equals 16. Okay, that's fourth rooting. And we can fifth root too, but like here's a fifth root example, fifth root example. I gotta finish up here actually. Last one, okay, five, delete, I can't control that commercial, okay, F fifth root of 32, okay, in this case it's negative, okay, again, what do you know, well, just grind some numbers, right? 2 times 2 equals 4, times another 2 equals 8, times another 2 equals 16, times another 2 equals 32. Okay, therefore, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 equals 32. Okay, again, we have 5. That's an odd number. That means odd number of negatives equals negative. Our answer is two. Same thing with here. That's a positive two. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. An expression of the form n square root over x is called a radical. If n is even, the expression represents only the principal root. All right, I'm done. That's it for today. I'll do some more tomorrow, guys. I got to bounce. I got to get my son from school because he's awesome. And uh, hey, yeah, I love my kid. And he loves me too, because I'm an awesome dad and he's an awesome kid. I appreciate you guys, viewers, lurkers, twerkers, those that hit the like button, those that are hitting the subscribe button. I hope you guys all have a legendary day, because you're all legends. Hashtag word. Appreciate you all. Thank you for following and the support. Uh, I'll check you guys out tomorrow. Have a great day, evening, or night, wherever you are. Bless, guys. Take care. Johnny with Whiskey Tango saying for now, peace out.